Hey, welcome, lazy, lazy Linda. We had uh, had some technical difficulties at the top of the hour, so I think we got it sorted. There's there's Cindy and Robin. Now we got it. Okay. We have we have one person. We have five people. Okay. Becky's joining us. Hi, Becky. Oh, there's somebody. There we go. You know what it was? What? Um. There was a software update and, oh. and the default was changed from public to private. Uh. So we were sitting there tw for 20 minutes and nobody could hear us because it was set to private. Ugh. So now I got to watch that. So hi, Inez. Sorry, folks. We um, software worked against us today. It was marked. Uh, the show was marked private and it's normally defaulted to public. So um, I didn't see that till it was too late. Hi, Tim. Oh, there's, all right. So yeah, so people do like us. We were starting to wonder that, you know, maybe people didn't want anything to do with us. So happy Easter, everyone. Sorry about that. We've been on since the top of the hour and uh, uh, doing wonderful things, but it was all private. So it's all recorded, but you just can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> we try, we try. So hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll hang in there for a while now since we messed up 20 minutes of it. Um, so I hope everybody's having a nice day. I do have the uh, window open and we have a state park, big one, that's uh, south of us about a mile. And uh, it's Chamber of Commerce weather. So if you hear motorcycles go by or loud cars, that's uh, kids with alcohol <laughs> headed to the park. Yeah. So, you know, that's an interesting thing. I'm going to, one of these days on a bike ride, I'm going to take a little bag and I'm going to stop and pick up every one of those little uh, airplane sized bottles of liquor Nips. that are uh, so, thrown on the side of the road. You know, are people drinking and driving? Yes. Yes. They're everywhere, man. All right, we actually have people. I feel better. I thought maybe people weren't liking us anymore. <laughs> yeah, it took us too long to realize that we should have checked YouTube. Yeah, well, it's it's been automatic, you know. I don't think about it. And then yeah. I checked, why is this not going live? And because it's smart private. Yep. <laughs> Technology. Gotta love it. From Scotland. All right, Louisa, good to have you with us. Yeah. All right. One of those places where I would travel overseas to a visit, Scotland. Yep. Not a lot of them, but Scotland and Ireland are right on the top of the list. Yep. Well, actually, uh, you know, UK, anything north of London. So fly into yeah. London, you know, fly into London, get in a car and get out of there. Head north. Yeah. But um, yeah, there was, I think I was telling somewhere along the way, there's a cyclist I follow who, um, he does bike packing all over the place. And uh, one of his trips was to start at the very top, which must be, I think it's Scotland. I don't know my geography that well, but start right at the top and, and uh, ride all the way to the bottom down to Cornwall or whatever it was. And uh, wow, did you know, over the course of however many weeks he did it, boy, did we see some scenery. It was very cool.
Toronto, Allison, good to have you with us. All right, we got people. <laughs> they like us. <laughs> oh, man, Nooper joins us. Yeah, no kidding, Nooper. Yep. A simple software update. And for some reason, they decided to make uh, the default private instead of public. Yeah, thanks. Got to check everything all the time. That's why I hate updates. We have a new update for you. Would you like to install it? No. 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 You're just going to cause me work. No. But you need it for security. No, I think I'm going to just take my chances. <laughs> John O. Groats. Help me, Louisa. Hey, Carol. Oh, thanks for, uh, uh, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, people, and for people who watch this afterwards, Stitchy Princess on Etsy, uh, a Ukrainian designer, help her out, buy a chart. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, that is uh, cool. Sponsor for a Ukrainian family that met from an embroidery group led by, see, there's needle and thread tying people together. That's fantastic. Good for you, Carol. Yeah, buy a chart from Stitchy Princess. Yep, help her out. I'm sure she could use some revenue. I have two that I'm going to buy. Sponsoring a family, so sponsoring a family meaning you're providing funds, Carol, or um, to what degree is that? Is that through some organization? Curious about that. Those people, poor people over there just having their country just ripped to shreds. It's just criminal. John O'Groats to land and Oh, that's the that's a race. Oh, I gotta look that up. Oh, where's my paper and pencil? <laughs> See, I always have paper and pen ready because this stuff always comes up. So John O. Groats to land in. Thank you. I'll look that up. Hi, Josie. Well, Josie, we screwed up the first 20 minutes. It, the show was uh, marked private. And so we were here, but um, we were doing wonderful things, but you couldn't hear and see any of it. So it took a minute. Software updates. Talking about Fibonacci and... Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we were burning it up. We had all kinds of stuff going on. <laughs> well, maybe not that good, but... <laughs> yeah. What's more important, scissors or needles? Yeah. No organization. I found a home and helped them set up with services in school. Wow. Sharon Bruce. We got Ireland and Scotland. All right. Happy Easter to the Northern Ireland people. I found a home and helped them set. Wow. Carol, bravo. United for Ukraine Federa Federal Program. Huh. Watch you watch us or finish taxes. See, that's I'm glad we won that one, Josie. <laughs> if we'd if we'd have lost out the taxes. <laughs> It'd be time to just call it a day. <laughs> oh, man. That's a low bar, but we'll take it. <laughs> hmm. Oh, Nooper, good one. Yep, went right by me. Mm -hmm. Well played. Okay. Yeah, relax, yeah. 
<laughs> you, you set up a show and have it go nowhere. <laughs> it takes me a minute. <laughs> Uh, that's good. Yeah, that whole that whole uh, refugee thing, you know, politics aside, you know, there's real humans out there, and I've wondered, you know, what what you can do to help to make sure, but make sure that the money goes to the people and doesn't get filtered out as you go along. You know, stitching can stitching out of three what? stitched card what oh my do we know about that um, I, we've done we've done embroidery on paper and turned it into 3d well but uh, not perforated paper on uh, just ordinary like cardstock you can uh, Brick, you use a needle or they make pricking tools that you can poke holes in the card and then stitch the design and and turn it into a card or, you know, I, don't, I haven't seen any hmm. uh, 3D, but I have done a fair amount of the paper embroidery. It's kind of fun. Okay, Louisa, you got to enlighten us more and go Sharon, retired. Hooray. More stitching time. Good for you, Sharon. <clears throat> so, so uh, do you, are you still filling the time, Sharon, uh, or now do you have idle days where you're doing nothing but stitching? How, how does that happen? What happens to you? I know, I know Cindy, Cindy's, <laughs> I don't care, I'm retired. <laughs> yep. Whatever, I got time. <laughs> There's okay. Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Yeah. When I retired, I started doing bigger projects. Yeah. Yeah. More time to stitch. Three. Yeah, my heart, anger, my heart anger got a lot bigger. Okay, Pieces I have a question light. about that, uh, Robin. But just a minute. Three D stitching sheet booklets, Anne's paper art booklets. Huh. I don't know well, that we know about these things, do we? Look that up. I don't. I don't. Give me just a second here on the old iPad-o. This is, um, I'm intrigued. Hey, Susan, good to have you with us. Uh, let's see. Okay, oh, Susan, um, that reminds me, because I think it's Susan, your lake in the hills, right? Because our, our, uh, yeah, Sandy, I, I had the show started right on time, but I had it marked. Well, I didn't. The default software setting had it marked private. So we were doing a, a really nice show and nobody could see it. Um, yeah, so yet another technology thing. Hardly have a minute. Stitching, knitting. Yeah, okay. All right, good. Good. But Susan, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I remember you're in the Lake in the Hills, so we've got to have lunch because our son just moved from Phoenix to Huntley. And so we'll be. Um, We'll be visiting more because it doesn't cost a thousand dollars round trip to uh, fly. Anne's paper art booklets. Anne's paper art patterns. Yeah. Just a minute, coming up with stuff here. Yeah, there's the motorcycles. Yep. Yeah, there's one. From the intersection, it's a, a rather like 11% steep hill uh, up past our house. And so the motorcycle people like to see how powerful they are. Yeah. 
every now and then we get a cop sitting at the top and I'm sure they have a lot of fun with tickets because I wish they were doing it all the time. All right. Okay, here's, here, let's see. Make that go away. Okay, it's not in English. What's .ch? What country is that? I think that's Czechoslovakia. Is it? Czech Republic. Yeah, it sounds right. Czech Republic. Okay. Alicia, good to have you with us. All right, we got to, oh, okay, we got to see, got to see about this here. All right. Okay, here's Anne's paper art dot ch. So these are, there's 3D in here somewhere. Three D card embroidery. Here we go. Card of stitching. Hmm. Let's get the cards. Pretty. Yeah. Wonder where the 3D part comes in. CH is Switzerland. Oh, thanks, Tim. Oh. This is why we have Tim. He knows these things. <laughs> okay, where's the 3D part? I'm not. I'm not seeing. 3D card embroidery pattern sheet. I mean, these are not what I would normally stitch, but they're beautiful. Yes, thanks, Sandy, for bringing that up, too. Yes, yes, support the Stitchy Princess. And Happy Easter, Helen. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> Helen. <laughs> okay. All right, we lost out to Helen's family. Bummer. <laughs> but she stopped in to say hi, so we'll take that. Well, I am I am fascinated by these things. But it looks like the cards are lifted up off of the like it's multiple layers. I can't tell. It is. I'm I'm reading about one of them. Oh, where'd you find English? Oh, it came up on my phone. It's I have German or English. Uh, German or English is my options. Oh. Well, aren't you just the coolest thing on the planet? It's up me on her. On the home page, it's up on the right hand side under currencies and manufacturers. The 3D card embroidery sheets. And that's it. There's a die cut image that goes on. Here's Louisa. I get the booklets from Switzerland. See the yeah. flowers on the page on the left. You cut them out with wee scissors. Like Sharon Snitty. Oh. Oh. Basic embroidery, and the instructions come in four languages. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Go, Tim. Look at this. We're getting like a little culture here from Tim. Well, I think we have to. I think we have to have one of these, don't we? <laughs> I mean, just to see what it's all about, I think so. Yeah, sun, there's a sunbonnet Sue. There's a Christmas one, which is really pretty. Several Christmas ones. I think so. No, it's... Ooh. Here, do you want to look? That one really, I like that one. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah. So we cut these, we cut each of these out, we stitch them and we cut each of them out. Oh man. There is some basic stitching involved. I suspect it's probably the borders from what I can tell. Oh, the, oh, the, the flowers are not stitched. It didn't look like it. It looks more like they're die cuts. 
Oh, and then there's holes okay. pierced for the embroidery. Yeah. And it's probably maybe a, like a back stitch. Or it could be a cross stitch, depending on how it's, how it's set up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think we have to try this here. I think it's just a simple back stitch. Really interesting idea. Yeah. Huh. Okay, good, because I didn't have any place to spend money. <laughs> now look at the one with the bells, the Christmas bells. It's pretty. It is right. really pretty. That's in 3D, the 3D car? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm friends with Louisa. Yeah, I, I yeah, that I I know that Louisa, um, but I can't say that I've been to your page. Don't take it personal. Uh, there are lots of these cards on my page. Okay, all right. Um. Oh man, this is Louisa. You have done evil things here. <laughs> well, right. it's it's really only fair, Gary. Usually, we're the one that are doing evil things. So That's true. Times true. turnabout's fair play. All right, we're going to Louisa's page. Look at that. Oh. Look at that. Makes beautiful cards. Yes. I'll say. Wow. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, look at the penguins. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. That's cool. Oh, I see where the stitching is. Oh, yes, man. Yeah. It look, looks like a little bit of string art. Yeah. So some of the crescents that we like to do. Yeah. And wow. maybe some other. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you pick, pierce the stitch pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got the picture now, Louisa. Yep. And that's the kind of paper embroidery that I have done. Yeah. On bookmarks and uh -huh. uh, there is a uh, website that that is paper embroidery. I can't think of it off the top of my head. They don't do anything this fancy. That's beautiful. Ooh. Now that's a that looks like a cross stitch insert into a. I love it. Yeah. Oh, Louisa, you need to do a live show with us. There you go. Yeah, yeah Louisa, 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 what are you doing Wednesday night? <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh man, look at that. That's beautiful. And I'm half serious, Louisa. If you do a show, do the show Wednesday night, uh, we'd be up for it. That is so neat. And show this stuff. This is cool. Yeah. Mm hmm And and talk about how she found it and got into it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We can we can go an hour, no problem. Oh yeah. Easily. Here's Easter cards. Oh, this stuff is neat. That's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ivy. Oh, this is our, this is all right. I've never seen this stuff. <laughs> yeah. I guess I should have asked permission to show Louisa's page to the, the world community, but 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, see, oh, this. And they look like they make up quick, too. Like, you could, you could literally do cards for people without it being a lifelong project. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'm pumped up about that. Very cool. Thanks. Yeah. That's great. Ha ha. Okay, Louisa, you did it. Reverse enabling. <laughs> you win the trophy. Yeah, I'd put them in a thick envelope, Sandy. Yeah. All right, going to have to order some of that. Yep. So oh, I should put that up in case people want to. What was that? Um, Anne's what? Anne's paper. Anne's paper art yeah. booklets. Anne's paper art dot ch. So let yeah. me. Put that up there. There, there. So if anyone's interested, that's where you uh, where you go to get these in Switzerland. Anne's Paper Art Ch. We'll get you there. Boy, thanks, Louisa. My husband just recently said I have a serious cross stitch problem. Really? Uh, no, I, we we don't we don't understand that talk here. Mm -mm. No, we don't. No. And for those of us who are not monogamous stitchers but do multiple techniques, well, we've got multiple problems. <laughs> yeah, we don't uh, we don't recognize comments like that. Mm -mm. A oh, Anne is an Australian. We moved us. Oh, so that means she talks, she speaks English. So that means we can get her on the show. Ha ha. There you go. Ha ha. Well done. I'll be sending off an email right after the show because we got to talk about this stuff. Plus, I'll listen to that Australian accent all day long. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow, all right, so that's, there, there you go. Worth it. Thank you, Louisa. Well done, and Beth wasn't here, so don't tell Beth. <laughs> <laughs> Karen's husband was kidding. No, he wasn't. <laughs> We have to have a conversation with him. It is interesting. You know, I thought about doing a show um, with spouses. Uh huh. Just to, to get the other side of it. Because cause the. Um, you know, so many people are support, you know, there's, uh, their partners, spouses, whatever, support them in their thing. Uh, but then is, is there a hobby on the other side that we need to learn about, you know? Right. Um, and, and, and what have they learned from each other in terms of, of the different hobbies? And uh, it's, yeah, there's, there's a, because like Marga, you know, Marga is, is even fair, the number of hobbies she's been through. But, uh, but she'll, you know, uh, stuff will come up every now and then that, you know, she learned from a hobby, like marine aquarium stuff. And, yeah. you know, she'll, she'll pop it out like, whoa, yeah. And so, oh, yeah, I learned that, yeah. She was paying attention. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, she's very tolerant. The gallery in Australia. That is one of my great frustrations, Nooper. 
uh, the, the lady that was doing it with us, her husband got a job in the UK somewhere. And so they moved. And then we did that one show with the other person, the, her replacement. And then I tried a couple of times and she just, she just didn't, wasn't interested. She just didn't quit responding to me and uh, just wasn't interested. But I was really enjoying those monthly tours of their exhibits because it's just some brilliant needlework being done in Australia. But it, it just dried up as, as things do because the person that was spearheading it uh, moved on. And so we, we, lo we lose out on that and it's too bad. And I, I did try because I wanted to keep it going, but um, uh, just, yeah, lost track. It's too bad. <clears throat> yeah, I got, okay, I got to work on that. That's logistics, Ivy. Yeah, what stops me is logistics. Doing a show with spouses, you got to, yes. Oh, okay, Louise's husband has trained. See, that my dad was a model train freak. Um, and yeah, I mean, I grew up with trains. I never lived in a house as a kid that didn't have a, a, a large train layout. Yeah, that is a cool hobby. Oh, Kelly, thank you. Happy Easter. It's okay, Kelly. We've only been on like a half an hour because we had the technology screwed up at the beginning, so you haven't missed out that much. Um, Tetelestai by Gypsy Rose Needle Arts. Don't no. Let's see, you're making me look these <laughs> things up. Now, a name like that, you know, you got to know what it is. T E T E L E S T A I. Uh, while, he, while he's doing that, I'm working on Fibonacci swirls. And that is and beautiful. Okay, Robin here's is, here's to tell us I here. Okay. Oh. Okay. Can that could that go on on perforated paper, eighteen count? I think it could. As long as it doesn't have any any half and quarter, well, half yeah. stitches, you can make quarter stitches. Well, right. that's beautiful. Oh, man, I like that. I got to get that chart. Okay, this is getting expensive, folks. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to go the other way, where we tell you stuff and you spend your money. <laughs> to tell us... <laughs> Just, I'm, I'm writing down the silences because I'm writing down mm -hmm. how I'm going to spend money. Nice okay, <laughs> nice going, Kelly. Um, saw Beth yesterday on Zoom meeting. Oh, she's oh she's doing that. Yes, I, she's talked about that. Heels. What's heel? I don't know heels, Kelly. Yeah, uh, you're right, Nooper. It would be good. Logistics and time to set those up. Just get, That's why it was so nice. First week of every month, I knew we had something, and it, you know, just, it takes so much. Uh, oh, that reminds me, Kelly. I, I got I to gotta write to you because I've got a show idea, but I need to... Um, actually, we should have a phone conversation. Um, if, 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 you're, if you're interested, I've got an idea for a show. Uh, Kelly, uh, if, if you're interested, give me a, send me your phone number and uh, let's have a phone conversation and see if it makes any sense because it's out of left field. You know, Gary, some of the, some of the best conversations are when you're totally off topic. Yes, yes. 
like the marine biologist and her incredible cross-stitched octopus. Holy <laughs> yeah. But I knew where she went to school because that's my part of the world. Oh, okay. No, Beth, I'm busy with family. Beth, no, tell family to take a hike. Join us. Hey, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> Black Pet Studio with Kelly. I'm in. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, so yeah, I, I yeah, I think we I think I have a show idea, Kelly, that we could have fun with. So and actually learn something. So uh, has to do with eyeglasses. Love the blues oh. in in my needle in your needle point. Oh yeah, put that back up, Cindy. Here, let me oh, put your full screen. Yeah. They're actually kind of it's, it's teal and teal, teal and turquoise, teal and lavender and gray. That really looks nice. Thank you. Now, now, this is the first time you've done this or the second time you've done this chart? This is the first time I've done it. Robin's done it. Yeah, Robin's. I'm the overachiever. That's, that's, that's why I asked, just because cause Robin's a big show off. <laughs> well, I got so excited by Karen Draczynski's website when she stitched one of her counted canvas pieces on silk gauze. I literally started to vibrate. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get home and dig into my thread gatherer box and go bananas. And that's exactly what I did. I was good. I stayed. Got Cindy company for another hour or two. <laughs> but I was like, mm -hmm. it was just so eye opening. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so much fun to do. Yeah. So, check out a uh, Wednesday night. I'll, I'll put up the picture of, um, of Robin's silk gauze uh, Fibonacci swirls. Yeah, so this is 18 count canvas, and Robin Robin has done one on 18 count canvas, but she's also she also just finished one on 40 count silk gauze. Silk gauze. Right. Let me see it's, if I have it here. Just a second. And and one cotton. I had to use a cotton for my outline. I didn't have the right color of silk. So right now she's doing huck or Swedish weaving. And this came about because I was looking for something else in my box of fabric and found this huck toweling. And there's the back. Well, that's cool. All of the stitching it's is on, on the, the front, front, on the floats. Huh. That's that, right. that, that huck stuff. I first ran across that. There was up in, was it that, that online shop in Dakota or North Dakota or somewhere up north, Minnesota? Mox Cloth Lady or Nordic Needle. Nordic Needle, that's the one. Because yeah. they had a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And then, yeah. I don't know if they're even still alive, but I know they cut way back. Completely gone, huh? They're completely gone now. They went online for a while. And yeah. then And then they closed that up. But for people who like to do the Swedish weaving, there's a really nice website called Monk's Cloth Lady. She's out of South Dakota. She carries a ton of patterns. She's got kits. She's got fabric, um, not just monk's cloth, but she has white huck toweling, and she has some pre right, Wait, wait, Robin, you're going to have to spell that. What say? Spell the company name again. M O N K. Cloth. Oh, monks. Yes. Monk's it was coming. It was coming out as monk's cloth, so that's why. So monk's cloth. Yeah. Okay. And she's. It's a site pretty much devoted to Swedish weaving. All right. She's, she's got pre-finished table runners, so all you'd have to do is, is a pattern on them. Uh-huh. I'm tempted. I'm really tempted. I probably will order some more towels from her because they make great gifts, and they don't take that long to do. The longest part for me is figuring out what pattern do I want to stitch and what colors. And that's because I have too many choices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, okay, it's called Monk's Cloth what? Lady. Lady? Yeah. Oh, here it is right here. Okay. Since now all the technology is cooperating. Um. And another place, if you just want to do it on a terry cloth towel with an Ada insert, I send people to Stony Creek's website. She's all kinds. And hand towels and dish towels. A few bath towels occasionally. And also baby bibs and baby 
um, towels. Put towels. Because this is a technique that works well on anything with an A to insert. Yeah. And it's washable, color fast. The DMC is color fast. You can use watercolors. Watercolors is color fast too. Yeah. I've done, um, Cindy's got a piece that I stitched for her that I used an over dyed uh, floss in. Because uh, she has a turtle bag, and, and the fact that they've inserts has given me lots of stuff to do for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any pictures. She does if you go into the sub menu, into the menus. Well, that one, the hot towel one doesn't show up because it's white on white. It, <laughs> I saw that, yeah. Here's a tip put it on a black background. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I could tell on my phone when I looked at it that there was a picture there of it, but here you go. Okay. Oh, I see how it stays on the surface. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, the Ada and the and Monk's, Monk's cloth Ada, and there's a couple others, it floats. So if you look at how it's woven, there are threads that sit above the other threads. And that's what you run under. Those threads that sit above. Yeah. Huh. All right, so Monks, Monks, M O N K S, Cloth Lady. Dot com. Here, I'm going to. Mm -hmm. I'll add to the enabling list here. <laughs> and then, oh, and here, here's my turtle bag. So last oh, year, that wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Christmas Three answer. things here. Okay. There we go. Wow. That's nice. The year, the year before that, I designed a hard anger one that fit. And she hasn't put the, this year's one together yet. There's the hard anger. That's nice. But the um, this year's, I found these really cool Dritz buttons that I stitched on. I think we talked about that. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. We gave her a piece of fabric, and she just needs to figure out what how she wants to place them on the fabric. Okay, yeah. Cindy, I know you want to stitch, but go get go back to that bag. I have questions. Okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, so is, is that is there a pocket that that just slides into, or how does that work? Yes. So that looks that looks like a really quality bag. Oh, it is nice. a very nice bag. So, so there's a a zipper right here. Look at that. So easy to change out then. Yeah. Wow. So, so I mounted. You just have it in plastic? Just, oh, look at that. A page protector. Yeah. I mounted it on the heavy uh, Pellon yeah. facing that they may use for like bill caps. Mm -hmm. And it's just taped on here. And then I put it in a page protector because these are long stitches. Right. And I didn't want them to catch. Right. So it's it's just kind of taped. Yeah. But and that's easy. Could... Anybody can do that. Even an idiot like me could do that. <laughs> yeah. And they come with they call the they're, they're called a shell. They're called a shell. Uh, so you can you know you can change them really easily. You just put in a different shell and you get a different look. Yeah. And, okay. And Ivy, is, Ivy's asking the question. Ever, where, where do we get this bag? Turtle bags. I think it's turtlebags.com. Yes. Turtle, turtlebags.com. Okay. And they have several different styles. So not meant for needle workers, but as soon as the needle workers discovered them, we with them. We went bonkers. <laughs> they they come in a lot of colors. And people who quilt, these are great for people who quilt. Yeah. You can do little little quilts or just take a fabric and put yeah. it over the shoulder. Right. right. Well, I like that you can switch things out. So you, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So there you go, Ivy, get your card out. Still on your lunch, still on your lunch hour, Ivy. Let's go spend money. And, and <laughs> um, I still have a couple ideas for things and I want to stitch. Um, so this, that was the best thing. It was like, uh, three of my three of my stitching friends have these bags. I'm set for Christmas gifts for a while. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Let's see, I was, where was I at? Oh yeah, I was here. Okay, this is Cindy's Fibonacci swirls on... Um, That's Brian. That's Robin's. That's or Robin's. Robin's. Hibonacci swirls on silk gauze. So very cool. So size-wise, how much smaller than uh, on 18 count? About half. Half? Yeah, it's about three inches by three inches, where this is about six by six. Right. <laughs> and it will eventually end up in the Iowa State Fair because there is a 40 count silk gauze category in Needlepoint. <laughs> And it would yeah. blow a lot yeah. of people's minds. Yeah. Because it worked out great. Is it's not what you normally see. Normally you see something done by Erica Michaels, who I like. And have done several. Right. <laughs> of her petite patterns. Yeah. Now, when I stitch on silk gauze, I treat it like needlepoint canvas. I cut a piece that fits by a five inch square or whatever size stretcher bars I need. I think these this was probably seven by seven. Uh huh. Because I have yardage of this stuff. <laughs> um, and tape it and mount it with tacks. Don't need to do anything special. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ivy Ivy Turtle Bags, Turtle Bags B A G S Turtle Turtle Bags dot com. Buy two. <laughs> okay, hold 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 on the hold on the Fibonacci, Robin. I'm come back to you in a minute. Okay. Um, and Josie, I, I thought the same thing for the bag, uh, any number of Avlia patterns oh, on yeah. that bag would be fantastic. Good call on that. Yep. Yep. You, it would be so quick and you could switch them out. Oh, it would be just ideal. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. So the, the, um, Fibonacci. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, you do it on silk gauze. Now, silk gauze has to be mounted on what you mounted on cardboard frame, right? No, I treat it like canvas. I tape the edges and I mount it on stretcher bars with tacks. Oh, really? Okay. I thought it had okay. to be on. No. So you just tack it down then. Uh huh. Okay, and then you said you had to change. Tell what you had to change. Tell that again. There were two patterns that were, were over in the original pattern are over two threads and they got lost with the silk because of the size okay so where, really, where where are they let me show where they are it is i don't, have, I don't think you'll be able to see. okay those two so it's the bottom yeah that, yeah, that one and the and one the just to the left of, left of it so you had to change yeah. these two. These two, yeah. Okay. Because I realized that the patterns that were more or less over four were the ones that really looked the best on this. Mm hmm And she used a single strand of floss. Oh, and it's the other two up at the, on the upper left. Um, the far left and the next one would change. Just those two. No, yeah, yeah, that one and the one to the right. We're also Here? changing. Those were the two biggest changes. The okay. other one at the bottom, I just added more. I just added the solid into it because she didn't have it in it because all of her other blocks had a solid and an overdock. Uh huh. With the exception of the four little ones you do around the center. Yeah. That's just stitch with the overdock. The only thing you have to pay attention to, especially in those smaller areas, is is finding a sequence in the thread that has enough color variation. Oh, okay. It, so you just got to manage manage the the dye. So yeah. So I did some fussy cutting. Yeah. Which I would not normally do, but in this case, I knew I needed to see enough of the different colors in the over dyes. So you you was, just man you manage this so that it each of these weren't identical in some way well in those that was it was easier to do because you're only working with one strand uh-huh yeah i mean i i probably used a half a yard of thread yeah yeah quick 
Let's see, Aardvarks is asking, are the rectangles sized using the golden ratio? So I don't know. I, don't, I didn't count to figure that out. And she doesn't, the designer doesn't really say. This right. is in the um, two, uh, 20, 2021, Needle 2022, pointers. March, April, 2022, Needle Pointers Magazine. So if you're an ANG member, you, you, have access you to will this. have this access yeah. to this online. Um, if you're not, you can join ANG and then right. get access to it. Uh, the the spiral, I think, is where she was really going for the Fibonacci, and and if you if you count, the numbers are not exact. Like the so. yeah. the center square is sixteen by sixteen, then the little cross stitch rectangles are eight. But if you try to add everything up, it doesn't quite work because mm -hmm. all of the rectangles are outlined. Yeah. So wow. that adds a. Uh, a thread and it makes it kind of uneven but it still is the idea of the of that swirl the and the sequence that sequence yeah yeah hmm. is one a great used, pattern used on this on the 40 count she used machine embroidery metallic thread yeah. Gudermans, Air Gudermans. I'm never quite sure how to say it with the the U has the umlaut over it yeah <laughs> I would go gut, 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 gut German, gut. Yeah. Um, but um, DMC's Diamant, Diamant would probably work, and Krynik's cord would probably work. I just didn't have the color I wanted. Yeah. And it was an excuse to go to Joanne's and buy something. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, it sure worked out great. And who'd have thought to do that on uh, well, silk gauze? Karen, Karen yeah. Dudinsky, textured treasures. Because yep. we were, was it, I don't remember when it was, we were, I don't know, we were listening to, I think you and Beth talk on mm -hmm. one of the Wednesday podcasts, and you were talking about textured treasures. And so we were looking at the website, and or I, maybe Robin had been looking at it and said that, one of Karen's patterns she had done on canvas, but then she also did it on 40 count silk gauze. And that uh -huh. just lit up. <laughs> it up. I, I like it when I find something, and it's not necessarily an aha moment, it makes me think about what I'm doing differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've got, there's another pattern that was in needle pointers a few, a few years ago that I think is really cool by Lorene Salt, and I'm gonna look at it very carefully because I think it could be done on silk gauze. She's one of really my favorites. She's one of my yeah. favorites. I really like her work. This is one of her simpler ones because it's mainly Bargello and a little bit of string art. Mm -hmm. Here's the, here's the um, let me punch the right button and it'll work. Just bear with me while I'm Here's the yeah. turtlebags.com. Yep. Here's the tote. The tote has inserts on two sides. They also have a crossbody that only has one. One. It's smaller. Yeah. The purse has one. So the great colors. The tote yeah. bag. It's not a. It's a little too large for a handbag for me, but it's a perfect computer bag. Oh, okay. My computer fits in it just fine, along with all the stuff I need to take along with me. <laughs> oh, here's the crossbody. Okay. Yeah. But I think the window is the same size. Yeah. It is. It is, because Kareen has the crossbody, and it is the same size. As... I was able to find that out from the website. Now, see, I like this uh, uh, 95 bucks. I expected it to be a couple hundred because they look like they're really quality, um, you know, good material, well put together. And very sturdy. Yeah. So that's why I, I, I had 200 in mind, but so 100 to me, that seems like a. That's a gorgeous color. Oh. 72 bucks there. So. Yeah, if you watch, they do go on sale periodically. 
Yeah. And the colors change. <clears throat> yeah. So they have some, you know, some kind of standard. There's the the shells, you know, the denim and the black and the red, and the, you know. The brown. They, yeah, they, they've kind of got those all the time, but the other colors, the more unusual ones kind of change. Yeah, those are all the, all the shells you can buy. Yeah. And you're right, they are really nice colors. Pardon me while I just go for... That's the one I have. Yeah, I like that. Oh look, so that's got a that's got a really sturdy bottom to it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know why I'm promoting a mission sponsor show. <laughs> <laughs> and there are some painted uh, canvas companies or designers that are doing uh, painted canvas pieces that'll fit in these bags as well. Oh yeah? Specifically yeah. for them? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Very cool though. Oh, so these are the shells here, what they're showing. That's what the inserts right. you can buy. Yeah. Right. Well, that's just would be stupid. Stitch something. <laughs> right? So you're right. gonna do one for Marga in, in her future? Oh, sure. I'm on it right now. Yep. <laughs> no, but why would you buy a stitch something? Yeah. I can see why quilt people uh, would eat these up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. Quite cool. All right. Enough promotion for the turtle bags, people. <laughs> well... Sometimes it's so hard to find something that we like to do that you can have something practical. Yeah. And use it instead of just decorative. Right. Now here, Nooper giving us a Guterman, uh, if you say spew, the U sound. So Guterman. Yeah. Guterman. Thank you. We're, this is getting too educational. We're learning about Switzerland. And how to pronounce German and yeah, Guterman, would that be it? Hmm. Oh, Tom Ben, I had Tom Ben stuff is fantastic. Um, I have. What did I buy? I I bought some stuff anyway. This bag, Tom Ben's stuff is really good. It's all for knitters. But um, I keep, this is my travel bag, so I just keep all the thread, thread things in here. But this bag is designed um, to put in, uh, for knitters to put in a ball of, of uh, yarn and then oh, feed cool. it out through this thing. Yeah. Yeah, but th this is really well made. It's some kind of polyester, whatever. Um, but you know, they got, uh, hooks on them. Um, I bought a couple of things. I don't know what else I bought from Tom Ben a long time ago. And this thing has been everywhere in the country and it's still just fine. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Uh, uh, if you're looking for bags, yep. Tom Ben is, is really good. Yeah. Not cheap, but you know, last, I mean, this is, this is probably seven, eight years old, you know? No good. Still in good shape. Yep. What what are Swifts? I have two Swifts, a ca cafe. Oh, are those Tom Bin bags? The Swifts must be. Hmm. 10 years, one bag, 10 years, heavy use. Yeah, I'd take that. Sewn in Seattle. Yeah. But yeah, the Tom Ben stuff is really good. Yeah, it's interesting how companies um, evolve. I, I've uh, 
here, here, the only place we can do really any plantings is a couple places in the front and the back because it's a townhome and so, you know, association rules and all that stuff. But we have a patio that it's on the west side, on the back side of our house, which is the west side, that we don't use. Um, so I bought, I had a guy build me a four by four foot um, planter that I'm going to grow mini miniature roses in. At one time, a long time ago, I had 200 rose bushes in, in beds in the backyard. And wow. um, it, was, it was pretty cool, I have to say. But one of the beds I had was, was quite large. It was probably 10 by 20 foot, something like that, that I had nothing but miniature rose bushes in. And it, it got, they got so big that it just filled it. So it was just solid bushes, like you could not even hardly get in between them. And uh, so I decided to have this thing built and put on the uh, patio. And I'm gonna grow miniature roses in there. So you go back, it's been, oh, 20 plus years since I did this. So I go back to, you know, the people that I used to buy roses from. And one was Edmonds Roses that were in Portland and they were the premium, like for hybrid tea roses <clears throat> and stuff, they were the premium. That was, and so you bought them because they backed their stuff. It was always beautiful bushes that were in beautiful shape uh, and you know, everything. Now they have moved to Wisconsin and they're apparently some kind of a, uh, a clearinghouse distributor business. Oh, and yeah. and there were comments about how they were getting uh, uh, bush uh, bare root because you buy them bare root roses that are half rotted and you know and then they don't respond they don't back their stuff so this premium company that everybody bought from now has become this you know and you, you got to really do your research and um, yeah it was real disappointing but yeah these you know wh where do they make their stuff where do they get their stuff you really got to take the time to do it. Probably wanted to retire and none of the kids wanted any part right. of it. So, you know that's it. what it was. You know it. Yep. Yep. They didn't want to, you grew up with roses and the seasons and they wanted nothing more to do with it. Yep. Yeah. You know it. Okay. Well, so we got to get Tom Bin maker's bag. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's been a long time since I've been to Tom Ben. So we got two bag companies now, Turtle Bags and, uh, but that that bag looks beautiful, Cindy. That thing is really nice. Yeah, you know? I, I like it. Now I and I was planning to stitch my own, but I don't have to because I got rotted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, one of the ones, and I don't know when I'm going to do it, but bandanas now come in all colors, and some of them are multicolored, and they're wonderful to embellish with surface embroidery. Ah, mm -hmm. so that would be a really good insert as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All kinds of great ideas. Yep. Yeah, the, a lot of the Avalia stuff would work really well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Sandy. Uh, yeah, I, obviously, Sandy. What, once I started looking for roses, because I used to get uh, miniature roses from Bridges Roses, they're out of out of business. But uh, Jackson and Perkins is still in business. It's still more expensive than they need to be, but they were always quality roses. And um, a couple of the old standbys are are still in business, but uh, Edmonds, nope, real shame. Uh, it's hard for families though to keep those businesses going and, and keep them at the top. Oh yeah, miniature roses are, are incredibly hardy because they're growing on their own roots where the t hybrid teas are grafted to, to rootstock um, and miniatures are grown on their own roots and oh yeah, they're very hardy. Um, actually relatively easy to take care of. You just have to make sure you cut the blooms off before they uh, uh, open up all the way so they'll keep blooming but yeah, they're they're uh, they're quite easy to take care of. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. They uh, yeah they are really and they're fun. We used to have um, uh, Marga would get like little uh, little pictures about oh an inch tall or so little vases and stuff. Yeah. And then uh, cut two or three miniature roses and just set them around the house, and uh, it, it it just works out great. You know, you don't need a lot of space. You don't need a a bunch nice. of care and, and they bloom all the time. 
and uh, so you could always keep fresh ones yeah yeah yep just fertilize once a month spray them for mold and mildew uh, or uh, fungus and mildew you got to watch for uh, mites but yeah. um other than that yeah they're they're pretty easy to care for yep so yeah i've got this four by four foot uh raised bed thing uh, made out of cedar on the patio that um I'll get five bushes in there. They'll look ridiculous this first year, but then after a couple of years, they'll they'll pretty much fill in. Yeah. Yep, it's gonna be neat. Yeah, Nooper, yeah, there are some that are quite fragrant. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing when you're buying roses, in, in, in good rose places will tell you whether there is a fragrance to them because some have no fragrance whatsoever and then others, um, others can are just wonderful, yeah. But good places will tell you that. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Yeah, Floribundus. Who who is that? Um now see what now now we're gonna end up doing a rose show. <laughs> Because these names, you know, you know how the names come back to you? Gurneys. Yeah. Gurneys, uh, G-U-R-N-E-Y-S. That was always a good one. Heirloom roses. Heirloom roses uh, were really good, and they specialize in the uh, old English tea roses that uh, are a very different uh, type of rose. Um, but, yeah, heirloom is really good. So, yeah, those gurneys, heirloom... Um, and uh, developed the winter hardy ones. Um, Jackson Perkins, yeah. Jackson Perkins is always that much more expensive that you just didn't. Spring Hill Nursery is another one that we used to buy from, they're still in business. But do your research on these places. Um, but those aren't tea roses, those are right, they're high yeah, but they were yeah. meant. To be grown in like zones three, I four, five, three, four, and five. Yeah. There was a professor at Iowa State, I can't remember his name, that developed uh, several varieties of roses that were meant to be grown in northern climates and they oh. would in our winters. Yeah. I can't think of the name of it either. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, see, now, now that I'm in St. Louis, I can get away with more than I could in <laughs> Illinois. Yeah. Yep. And I know that some of his varieties are still available because I've, I've come across them in a couple places. Yeah. Um, yeah, roses are cool. If you just have a few, they're pretty easy to take care of. And you can plant them in pots, you know. Just got to make sure you stay watered. And they need a lot of sun. Mm -hmm. A lot of sun. They are not a shade plant. Nerdy Stitcher's going to email me a photo. Well, all right. Griffith Buck. Dr. Griffith Buck was the... Um, Buck's, Buck, I know that name from long ago, yep. Was the professor at Iowa State that developed the ones that are cold hardy. Cold hardy. Yep, he I know a, that name. Mm -hmm. There, front garden, always roses with a pride. Uh, yeah, see, you can do. Yeah, uh, climbing roses are, um, climbing roses are challenged because uh, the canes that grow this year are what bloom next year. So you got to keep them alive to next year, um, <laughs> which is not always easy, especially in, in northern climates. Uh, I've seen lots of things, people wrapping them, literally wrapping them in burlap. Um, uh, well, there's, there's a technique where you, you cut out one side out of the ground and you lay it down on the ground and cover it up. And then in the spring, you put it back up and tie it to the trellis. Anything to keep those canes alive so that you'll have blooms off of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, 
Nerdy is sending me an email. I'm looking. Oh, here. Thought it was something. Winters. Ain't no joke. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. That's okay, huh? <laughs> uh, yep, that's okay. That works. Uh oh. Nerdy says her husband and I are ornamental gardening freaks. Uh oh. It's a lot of sun time. Hey, Kim, Kim's with us. Opening that store in, in May. It's getting there. Yay. Yay. Yeah, yeah, Sandy, climbing roses. I, uh, I tried one once. Nah. A whole lot more work than I was willing to put in, but yeah, that's a that's a nice one there. It's interesting all the different hobbies people have. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's nice. That looks like yeah that that looks like a like a big mini, big is that like a large miniature rose, uh, nerdy. Don't know that I've ever called anybody nerdy more than once. Um, <laughs> yeah, that looks like a large miniature rose. That's beautiful. What what is the uh, variety there? Like to know because I have yet to select my roses. Oh, she's hanging models in the store. That, now we're getting somewhere. Yep. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. That tells you that that tells the tale right there. Hanging models in the store. That means the walls are finished. You're getting ready. E excellent. Getting close. Gotta start planning a road trip. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a large miniature rose. Yeah. That's a fun thing about miniature roses. You can get some really small ones. The blooms are really small. And they're, they're just darn cute. Like almost dollhouse size. Mm -hmm. Grocery store clearance rose. Okay. All right. Yep. <laughs> seen, that, seen that movie. Yep. Nerdy, do you have to rescue any plant that you see that doesn't look healthy? <laughs> <laughs> I know people who do that. Yeah, that's a whole thing, isn't it? I mean, you can do that with just about any hobby. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I find myself doing that with sewing machines. I can't let that go to the junk. Give it to me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, those plants, those plants in June that they, you know, here, take them for a buck. Yeah. Yeah. Boo, New Zealand. Frederica, good to have you with us. <laughs> Nerdy says basically yes. Okay. You, you can see the movie, can't you? <laughs> yep. Been there, done that once or twice. <laughs> if her husband's in on it too, that's dangerous. Yeah. Oh, who even knows? better. Yeah. Who who comes home what night with what? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that being done. Growing a miniature rose in a teacup. Now that'd be fun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I want to know. Jackson Perkins once sold some that way. Oh, did they? Yes. Would they ship the teacup too? I believe they did. <laughs> hmm. And it and because I remember one of the ones was oh uh, I can't remember what line of China it was, but it was a, a pattern called Prince Albert that had a pinkish red rose on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just about everybody's grandmother had at one point in their life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. One of the florists where I grew up used to do that around Mother's Day. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. 
Now here, okay, Nerdy's, Nerdy's got herself a problem because she had a neighbor who just passed away, uh, would grow houseplants and then put them out all summer, uh, put them out, grow them all, and then put them out for free. Oh, man, that's a neighborhood there. That's dangerous. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> man. Everybody feeding off everybody else. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Now I'm intrigued about growing a miniature rose in a teacup. I have to look into that just for the challenge of it. Yeah. Well, the ones that that I remember were the really tiny bloomed ones. So that's uh -huh. what you Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't want it out of proportion with the teacup, yeah. No, no. But oh man, watering. You wouldn't want to forget a day. <laughs> variegated spider plant that she didn't kill uh, that's a low bar nerdy yeah. spider plants <laughs> okay nooper you drop a name like that i gotta know you, you can't just do that what is royal dalton help well, that's, that's the prince albert maker the china oh. maker it's royal dalton. thank you oh okay okay i didn't make the connection yeah yeah more of my useless information. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Collect vintage teacups. See, there's, yeah, there's another one. Yep. I have some of my grandmother. She had a china cabinet full of them. When my aunt died, my aunt, well, I mean, she didn't have any kids. She had more money than whatever. She had a lot of brains, but she had a lot of money. And she, she was a collector. And when, uh, uh, when she died, they were clearing out the house to go to auction. And she had just a ton of china of all kinds. And the guy, the, uh, it was my uncle's brother who was the, the estate person. And he, he was very, you know, stick to the guns kind of guy. And there was just, you know, we, my sister was there and Marg and I, and we, you know, we wanted to take some of the stuff, you know, it was top end China teacups mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. And he, he let us take a few, but he wouldn't. And then we learned later as we knew would happen when it got to auction, nobody wanted it. Mm -hmm. And so it just went for, you know, take it for a buck or whatever. And so it, all that good stuff that we wanted some just, you know, yeah. Five dollar blocks. Yeah, so sad. Yep. But he stuck to the rules, so. But we see that with stitches when they pass away. Yeah. Uh, we've been fortunate in our chapter to have people find us, families find us, and reach out and say, "Will you take?" Mm -hmm. After they've taken what they want. Yeah. Yep. No, I know it's it, well. It, yeah, the needlework thing. That's a that's a long term problem because we all have. Um, and in my case, it's not even it's not just inventory. It's finished stitch pieces. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I've started giving older pieces away mm -hmm. to, to uh, area nonprofits if they do a silent auction. Yeah. 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 And the finished pieces are probably more of an issue to get rid of than the materials. Yeah. 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 People take the materials, but they don't really want the finished pieces. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, when your mother passed away, Cindy, you know, the number of finished pieces you had was incredible. I mean, well, the, the one we took hanging, hanging in the living room, you know, it's beautiful. But, that would yeah. make her happy. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. it's uh, you got to have people who know what they are and can appreciate, mm -hmm. you know, the, yeah. the quality of work and, and the time and talent that it takes to do something like that. And, um, yeah, not a lot of people do that. No. We did have one woman who reached out to us. She had been, uh, she'd stitched on painted canvases for years and years and years. And she was just not going to do it anymore. 
but she did not want the stuff to go to Goodwill. Yeah. Oh. So she donated everything to us, yep. to, to our chapter, ANG chapter, uh, painted canvases, threads, lamps, mm -hmm. you know, stretcher, I mean, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, is a way, I mean, I remember the first time that that happened at uh, the Fox chapter, ANG Fox chapter, when I was a member. And I went to a meeting and there was just tables of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it, I, it was a new concept to me. Well, take whatever you want. Well, that's not, I don't, uh, how do you relate to that? And so I took a couple of things and came back to the table and the ladies around the table I was at, no, that's not enough. Go back. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Go back because you need to take more. And it was, you know, donate to the memorial fund uh, for the chapter right. for long-term projects and stuff. No, go back and take more. And I couldn't, I couldn't connect with that. Uh, but, but basically, what it came down to was the lady who had had all that stuff in her garage didn't want it back in her garage, and you can understand that. So make mm -hmm. sure it goes away tonight. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> uh, nerdy, nerdy forcing forcing cross stitch on her daughter. Ouch. Oh. Yep. And I sent, I don't know how many pieces, I sent to one of my cousins in Maine. Yeah, now there's a, there's a point, uh, Nerdy, or uh, Sandy talking about, you know, putting in her will that the stuff needs to go to local guilds. Yeah. Talk, yeah. Because, yeah, like our kids, you know, what do you want? Uh, get this junk out of here. Yeah. Make sure that they have a name and number for a contact person. Mm hmm Or or instructions on how to find that. Right. Okay, Josie, happy Easter. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, sorry for the late start. Learned a lesson there. Jeez. Frustrating. Always something. Yep. Well, uh, actually better that it happened today than Wednesday night. So join us Wednesday night. Yes. Um, we'll do more more of this. No guests that I know of. Who was, who was I trying to get into doing the guest? Well, that was Louise. Aunt, uh, um, Aunt and Louise. Yeah, Louisa. Louisa, Aunt I'm Louise. serious. If you, want to, if you want to do a Wednesday night show with us and show off some of the stuff you stitched, that would be fantastic. Doesn't have to be this Wednesday. But um, let me know. Because uh, uh, it's real simple. You just got to send pictures, and then we put them up. And you, you're you not on camera that much. Um, but we put them up on the screen, and then you just talk about what you did with them. And we enjoy them, and then we make lists, and we buy stuff. So, um, you know, it's a pretty straightforward program. Uh, it costs everybody but you money. You know? Yeah. So if you're interested uh, on a Wednesday night, let me know, because... Those 3D cards are very cool. It'd be great to see them. Talk about them. Yeah. Well, I will tell you that in 12 minutes, dinner time, the Easter dinner, I can, I can smell it wafting upstairs now. So no. um, I think we're going to bring this to an end. We've cost ourselves enough money, I think, for a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. Yep. So... All right, thanks to everybody for joining us uh, Wednesday night. Uh, be sure and listen to uh, today's podcast with uh, um, Robin. Robin. Robin Mayer, Robin, <laughs> Little Robin Designs. Really uh, a cool story and uh, some great designs. So be sure and check that out. Uh, join us Wednesday night um, for more of this. Bring pen and paper so we can enable you. Well, we've got to turn this back because it cost us too much money tonight. Um, <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Sydney and Robin. Talk to you Bye. later. Bye.